I'd just like to sort of take you back to my background, um, to where I am, where I've come today. Um, as I said before, I was um, met to Kate as um, a personal trainer, so um, we actually met in the gym. <laughs> and, um, but I really just loved Kate's um, outgoing personality. She was always there to greet me and, you know, or greet everyone that came in, and I just really loved um, you know, her persona and everything, and she really made us, pushed us along as well. We started coming, I started going on to all your spin classes, um, and really loved looking forward to those whenever I was in town. So, um, yeah, Kate and I sort of hit it off right from the start, and um, when she did, oh, yeah, actually, us mums, we, I went to school with him, we were within a year of one of our mums So, yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> 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 So, um, so when Kate said that she was wanting to, well, she was um, trying to start opening her own studio, so I said, well, let me know when you go and I'll come out. And so that's where um, I really fell in love with the, the personal training side of it. it was, and I said to Kate, well, how, you know, how do you get into this? How easy is it? Because right when I left school, I did want to actually do busy teaching, um, but I had a taste of the travel before I um, had a chance to go down to Otago and I thought four years, um, yeah, I thought well, I'd rather travel than actually do some four years study. But anyway, <laughs> that's quite right. So um, when I met Kate, and Kate said, um, you know, how that she had changed through Max, um, Max International Fitness College, which is um, what Kate and um, and Rowie, I'll introduce shortly, they were the founders of. Um, so I said, yep, no, that sounds like the course I'd like to do. So. I applied, um, but with me living down here, and the course was actually in Auckland, um, I was able to do it by correspondence. Um, however, I did, um, I was able, lucky enough to be able to go up and do like a week at a time at the college. Um, so my first week at the college was, um, I was lucky enough to have Rowie as my tutor for the first week, which was awesome. And that really got me going. So um, I came back and I was listening to or watching K-Man's um, DVDs every day while I was out there busy baking muffins. I had the TV going out there and I was driving down doing my homework. And um, so that was pretty much over the three months and each month I'd go back up to the college in Auckland and spend a week. So I was trying to keep up with the course as the, as the group that I started with were. So, so yeah, so it was, um, I just loved it. It did it over the winter period, which was a good quiet time. Um, and then last year, or May last year, I graduated um, and had an awesome graduation up in, in Auckland. And Rowan has always said to me um, that she wanted to come and open my studio. So um, at the beginning of the year, she said to me again, she said, Will you going to open your studio? And I said, it's actually open. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she can tell her girl. <laughs> so we booked a date there and then, and um, I said, Well, we'll celebrate the one year on as well. So, And that's why it's been awesome to have. Here now to, to share it. So it's been an awesome journey. Um, I still go in and get thrashed by Kate every week. <laughs> she keeps me on track with my training as well, and um, yeah, she's a, been a huge inspiration. So thank you, Kate, for bringing me on this journey. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to invite our Rowie to, if you'd like to come up. I love her, she's my favourite, and I'm not supposed to have a favourite. <laughs> You know Ainsley better than I do because she's from here. But I want to share with you this amazing experience. We're, the first week of her diploma program was business. And we're talking about being passionate about what you do. You've got to be do your life, life is too long to have a job you hate. You've got to do something you love. And she already had her business card plan. That's you know her better than me. That's the kind of person she is. She's ready to go. And the business card had these beautiful orange gerbers on them. And I set that picture in my mind. This is tough for me because I'm a real tough, hard lady and I'm just about to cry. <laughs> I set that picture in my mind and I said, I can't wait to see that in a studio. I can't wait to see that flower in a studio because I just loved it straight away. And when I walked into her studio today and saw, I've seen it in pictures, but to see it real life today on the wall with Rejuvenate You and the flower, just as I shared with you, this is what I live for. The reason I'm here is I have an absolute passion that the world should be healthy. 
particularly in New Zealand, because I believe it's a small country, if we make a difference here and we can change some numbers here, then the rest of the world will have a look. So I'm not sure if you know this, uh, probably better than you know it better than I do, but the automatic teller machine came from New Zealand because they trial it here and it worked, so they took it to the rest of the world. So I've set my mind on that, that if we can get New Zealand really healthy, fit and strong, then we can take those numbers per capita and take them to the rest of the world. The challenge that I've got in my profession, in the fitness profession, is that first of all nobody takes us seriously because we wear short shorts and our boobies out and hats on backwards and we chew chewing gum and talk on mobile phones and nobody takes us seriously. Secondly, most people when they go to the gym it's really intimidating. It looks like a torture chamber and there's lots of pretty people there in little clothes and the average population doesn't want to go to the gym and the reason we know that is that even in the most active populations in the world around about 10% of people have a gym membership. Out of, that means out of every 190 don't 10 do. But I, just a quick story on that, I was at a um, social event one evening and a guy had a, a keychain from a healthy health club chain. And I said, oh, you, you're a member of that club? And he said, yeah, I'm a member. I said, so which one do you go to? He said, I don't go, I just use it to pick up chicks. <laughs> <laughs> so he's part of that 10% that he's a member of the gym, <laughs> but he doesn't go. The challenge we've got, folks, is that coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes, in particularly in New Zealand, um, I've just been in Palmerston North and I was talking to a, a general practitioner, and he said to me, the general practitioners in New Zealand have been given specific guidelines from the National Health Board that they're the two biggest killers in New Zealand right now and they have to really focus on the, the, what causes them and why people are getting them. Um, when you're overweight and when you're unhealthy and when you're unfit, you're very likely to get coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Along with that, we, as you would have heard on the news just this week, that obesity has taken over from the number one killer in New Zealand from tobacco. But the two side effects of being obese is coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes. If we can get rid of obesity, coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes will almost disappear. When you go to the doctor now though and he says, look, you've got coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes and you're obese, you don't run out of the doctors going, yeah, I'm so happy. So what else does he give you? <laughs> Antidepressant pills, which is the silent killer in the world today because that's people walking around dead but they're still breathing. Because what's life if you're not happy? If you're miserable, life just is not worth living. So the reason I'm so happy to be here is that these gorgeous little studios that an angel is perfect because it's not intimidating and it's pretty and she's gorgeous and she's positive and happy and makes people feel amazing, that's a whole different story than going to a gym where people are wearing little clothes. And I looked at the exercise programs on the wall and they're easy to follow and they're not intimidating and they're fun. And they're not 75 hours long and you don't have to come for two hours every week, isn't that right? I very rarely spend time in my college now teaching face to face because I look after our advanced diploma students. But that particular week that Ainsley came to our college, I had the students for the whole week. And talk about a standout person. She was in a standout class. You had some amazing people who started in your class. But you never know who's going to make it. And there's some people that were in your class that are back in their lousy stinking rotten job because they didn't have the courage to have a go. And the reason I share that with you is my other purpose for being on this planet is that everybody has a career that they love, not a job that they don't. When you're doing what you love, it's a whole different story. <laughs> when you love undies, life is amazing when you're selling undies. <laughs> if you love selling undies but you're out doing something else, then life isn't so exciting. And I encourage you to be healthy, fit and strong and I really encourage you to have a career that you love. And I'm so incredibly happy to be here in the train station. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? She rang me today and she said, when you get to Springfield, this is the directions. And I said, well, I can't be that hard to find because we followed the train track all the way out here. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... And when we got here, it was just so perfect, so amazingly perfect. But the stories that I've already heard from these people tonight is about how much you brought the community together. And please take note because I've already given you a set of numbers. 300 people live in Springfield and 30 people train with Ainsley. So 10% of the population. <laughs> <laughs> so she's single-handedly doing more than the fitness profession's doing already because you guys aren't just walking around with a keychain. <laughs> You're actually coming here and getting results and feeling fantastic. 
One of the biggest challenges I believe with my profession is that we've made exercise boring or complicated or intimidating and it shouldn't be. It should be easy and it should be fun. So just for me to finish off tonight, I'd like to give you the message that I'm sending out to the world. If you could help me deliver this message, I'd really appreciate it. But it involves some singing and some dancing. Are you up for it? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you're a rocking group out here. You <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
And I'm in a profession that's supposed to be changing that. So what the hell happened? What, what's going on? Because we do this, too much of this. Can't have this, mustn't have that, don't have that, that's bad for you, that, don't eat that. And when you say to your child, don't eat that or don't have that, what happens? Yes. They want it more. Well, we're just grown up kids. When someone says you can't have chocolate, don't have that, what happens? We might not have it, but what do we want now? And we might not have some on Monday, and we might not have some on Tuesday, we might not have some on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. What happens by Saturday? The whole lot. And that's kind of silliness, because a little piece of chocolate every day is a great thing. When I go into schools, I say to kids, which is the good food, which is the bad food? Here's some broccoli and here's some chocolate. And kids are smart. They say chocolate's bad and broccoli's good. In my college, I had this very smart boy in Brisbane, smarty pants, more like it. He said, okay, let's try that out. Is broccoli good? Is chocolate good? So he ate three kilograms of broccoli <laughs> to see what would happen. This is how he explained it. His words, not mine. He said, I passed wind, very bad smelling for about three days. I had very bad stomach cramps for about five days and I'm never going to do that again. See, broccoli is a good food, isn't it? However, if you eat three kilos of it, is it still a good food? No, it's a bad food now. Chocolate in three kilo blocks, not a good food. The train is coming. Eat more fruit and vegetables. Eat more fruit and vegetables. So the biggest message I would like to share about food is there's no good or bad food. There's, this is all good food. It's beautiful, all food is good. It's just the amount that you eat. As soon as you say can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have, it becomes bad. And here's the challenge we have. We have eating disordered folks, and now particularly small children, that relate bad food to being a bad person. And I think that's really sad. Women are so hung up, we get so hung up on food because we think oh, I've eaten a bit of chocolate, I must be a bad person. No, you just ate a bit of chocolate, it was delicious. I'd like to see people get excited and passionate about eating food again. A lot of people eat they, they eat their piece of cake and then feel bad about it. Even while they're eating it, they've got a miserable look on their face. Where does that fit into? Be happy, be happy. <laughs> eat your piece of cake and be happy, be happy. Just eat common sense and logical. Eat more fruit and vegetables than you do eat chocolate cake. Eat more things that come out of the ground, that come out of a bag or out of the corner store with those things on the corner. See, we've got lots of those, haven't we? They're everywhere. Well, we don't have lots of these beautiful personal training studios. We should. It'd be good if we had one of those on every corner, rather than one of those on every corner. That'd be driving walk out. That'd be good. <laughs> driving walk out. <laughs> so number one is be happy. Be happy. Number two is drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Number three, eat more fruit and vegetables. Eat more fruit and vegetables. Now, why are you sitting? Please do it. Just. Two more times go. Eat more fruit and vegetables. Eat more fruit and vegetables. And the reason is you're sitting on your bottom. And please don't be embarrassed because you're all from the country and everybody poos. If you poo every day, twice a day is even better and it slides out easily. Do not be embarrassed. Everybody poos. You have to poo. It's important. When I go to schools, I, was, I wish that more teachers talk to kids about pooing. It's so important. How about this? the men in the room. <laughs> Unfortunately, men that die of cancer, the number one killer for men's cancer, is the one when you don't poop very often. And that's dangerous. When you eat more fruit and vegetables, what happens? You don't need a detox diet. Your body's really good at detoxing itself. Eat some more fruit and vegetables, fibre goes through, poo comes out, and what comes out with all the poo? All the bad stuff. Isn't that great? So if you're getting rid of the bad stuff every day. And you know, women talk about having a flat stomach and feeling amazing. If you poo every day, you don't tend to be bloated and you feel better. So turn to the person next to you and say, I will poo every day. <laughs> <laughs>
doing something, doesn't matter what it is, but around about four times every day. Now it doesn't have to be for 40 minutes, one minute's plenty. Just get puffed because people burn fat faster. Now you're going to come once, twice, three, four times a week to see Ainsley. That's fantastic. That's under a controlled situation. But the human body, three, four times a week with a personal trainer, that's only half an hour out of 168 hours. That's really not enough. The human body's meant to move more than that. But if you start telling people who are unfit or don't like to exercise, because I'm sure some of you have people in your life like that. None of you in this room. <laughs> no. But some of you might have people in your life that don't like to exercise. If you say to somebody who doesn't like to exercise, you need to go to 30 minutes of exercise. How long is 30 minutes? It's like three hours. See, that's the other challenge I've got with my fitness profession is you go to the gym and the classes are 60 minutes long or 45 minutes long. When you're unfit, that's a really long time. But you can get fit at home. This perfect exercise machine is called the human body on the floor. Do that for a minute, your heart rate goes up, you feel better. Boxing bag, run up and down the hallway, walk the dog, run around the lounge room with the kids. Um, one of my clients, she said to me, I've got no time to exercise, right? No time, no time. Of course no one's got any time. So in the morning to get the kids going, the wiggles in the in the DVD player, mashed potato, mashed potato, jump around the lounge room. Everyone's happy. My point being that we take exercise too seriously. You just have to take it regularly and consistently. And four times puffed during the day, just find a way to get puffed. Find a way to get puffed. <laughs> Last one's the magic key, exactly why you, you must, must have a fitness professional. The human body ages because of loss of muscle and loss of strength. So as your muscles start to deteriorate as you get older, you lose strength. So consequently you do less and you move slower and your metabolism slows down so you get fatter. Chronologically, we're going to age, time-wise. All of us, minute by minute, we're all older than when we got here. All of us have aged while we've been here. <laughs> but we don't have to get older physically. Chronologically, yes, physically, no. The only reason we get old is because we allow ourselves to get old. The reason I know that, uh, beginning of the year in Toronto, Canada, there was a gentleman who ran a marathon. He was 100 years of age. He ran 42.2 kilometres. He was 100. The beautiful thing about that story is he beat five people. Five people had to go home from that run and say, I ran a marathon today, but a hundred year old me. <laughs> we all know people who are incredibly active as they get older. We all know them. And we think, oh, they must be some freak of nature. No, they just haven't allowed oldness to move into their body. I would seriously say to myself every morning in the mirror, I will not let an old person move into my body. I will not let that happen. And the only way to, have to make sure that doesn't happen is to stay strong. Muscles deteriorate, they get weaker, not because they get older, but because we get, allow them to get weaker. You have to lift heavy things. You have to lift heavy things relative to what is heavy. So if you lift up five kilos and that feels heavy, guess what? You're lifting heavy things. But if you can pick up a truck and you're only picking up five kilos, <coughs> five kilos is not heavy. Your body can lift what it can lift. So if you can lift it, you're strong enough to lift it. So lift it as many times as you can, and when you come in next time, you aim to lift it one more time or a little bit heavier. Heard this stuff before? It's not very complicated. We've made it so complicated in my profession. It's just lift some heavy things, just lift as many as you can, and next time try and lift a few more or a little bit heavier. For the women in the room, because the men go, yeah, yeah, that's all about muscle. For the women in the room who go, I don't want to have big muscles, how about this? Do you want to have a fast, fat, burning machine body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reverse. Do you want to have a body that burns fat really slowly so that you get fat faster? Just say no. <laughs> the only way to make sure you've got a fast metabolism is to make sure you maintain your muscle strength. Not your muscle size, your muscle strength. Women, even if you came to the fitness professionals in this room and said, I want to be a bodybuilder, for a woman, it's almost impossible that you have large amounts of testosterone or you inject large amounts of testosterone. And that's not, I, I don't wish that for anybody. What I wish is that we don't get older. So we've got to lift heavy things. Just once a week, two or three, four exercises, lift as many as you can, and you have Ainsley to help you. You cross your Jeff Cake to help you. Please, please, please don't let your body get old. I hear too many women say to me, oh, I'm overweight and I don't know why. No, no, no. The only reason we get overweight is because we've got a slow metabolism. You've got to speed it up by maintaining your muscle tissue. You can do cardiovascular exercise, huffy puffy exercise, but if you've got a little engine, it doesn't work. When you were 20, we all had this big 
I, I like to call it a jet engine. You get on the plane and the thing picks up 500 people and flies it over across the other side of the world. And it burns fuel at a very rapid rate, yes? However, as a human being, what's happening is we're like that at 20. By 30, we're a V8. By 40, we're a V6. By 50, we're a little four-cylinder. Then we're a lawn mowing engine. <laughs> and we're trying to burn up fuel. And we all know that the lawn mower goes a very long way on a little bit of fuel. Yeah? I want to eat large amounts of beautiful food when I'm 100. So I want to have a fast metabolism to make sure that I can do that. Last but not least, I believe that as human adults, we have a responsibility to our kids. I don't want our kids to grow up in a world where coronary heart disease and type 2 diabetes, diabetes and obesity and depression are normal things. I don't want it to be normal. I want our kids to grow up in a world where healthy, fit and strong is normal. And if we don't set the example, who will? If we're not healthy, fit, strong human adults, what chance have our kids got? You don't have to go to the gym for hours and hours. If you love going to the gym for hours and hours, go. Most of us don't. You come and see a fitness professional for a short period of time and you do exercise with a be happy attitude. <laughs> Drink more water you've got, Louise. Eat more fruit and vegetables. Half and puff and lift some heavy things. How easy is that? <laughs> Please get that message out to as many people as you can. And just before we finish, we're going to finish off with the ultimate happy tool. Everybody stand up. <laughs> <laughs> challenges we've got is the day that was yesterday. What day is it today? Yeah, the day that was yesterday is the challenge. Because most people wake up on Monday and they have Monday itis, yeah? When you're in understanding exercise physiology, itis means inflammation off. So people like wake up with inflammation on Monday. <laughs> so we're going to change the names of the days of the week. You already know this. So now we're just going to sing it for the rest of the world. Four, three, two, one. May your Mondays be magical. May your Tuesdays be terrific. May your Wednesdays be very well. I've got to ride with your body. May your Thursdays be thankful. May your Fridays be a fun day. May your Saturdays be super. I did that for the school teacher in the room because they think it's super is spelled with the U. Super is spelled with seven, at least seven O's. Yes. May your Sundays be sparkly you choose them to be. If you teach this to your kids, it will be spectacular. <laughs> so when somebody says to you on magical day, because I can't even say Mondays anymore, how are you today? You can say, how do you think I am? It's magical day. I'm magical. How do you think I am? It's terrific day. My favourite on terrific day is I'm infecting people with my terrificness today. <laughs> wow day at the supermarket. How are you today? <laughs> oh, wow, how are you? Most importantly, I think, to wrap up that, that four days, because most people, they're all right by Friday, aren't they? <laughs> it's just those first four that are the real challenge. The wrap up for me for Thankful Day is brilliant. Haven't we all got a million, bazillion things to be thankful for? Look where you live. We're, we're women, a lot of women in this room. One of my new business associates is a refugee from Afghanistan. Imagine being a woman and waking up tomorrow morning in Afghanistan. The stories she shared with me have been absolutely horrific. Tomorrow morning you'll wake up in New Zealand. And whether there's free water coming out of the sky or the golden ball is shining, it's New Zealand. It's the most beautiful country in the world. Isn't that a good thing? Just to say that, I'm thankful because I live in New Zealand. I'm thankful because I'm breathing. I'm thankful because I'm standing. For those of you that saw 60 Minutes last night, the guy that got his legs blown off in Afghanistan, he doesn't have any legs anymore, and yet women, we whinge about our legs. Imagine not having any. So when you wake up on Thankful Day, thankful day you just say, I've got a bazillion things to be thankful for. Thank you so much for being here with this special lady, and thank you for having a studio that I love. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thanks, everyone.